May the 8th, 2001, Leeds United win the UEFA Champions League semi-final at the Mestalla against Valencia. Nigel Martin in goal, a defence of Ian Hart, Dominic Mateo, Rio Ferdinand and Danny Mills, a midfield of Eric Bakker, Olivia Dacar, Harry Kuehl and David Batty. Mark Viduka and Alan Smith were the forwards whilst the likes of Jonathan Woolgate and Paul Robinson were on the bench. May the 8th, 2004. Leeds were held at home to Charlton in a 3-3 draw. They were relegated to the Championship. Alan Smith had played one of his last games for Leeds United and was held aloft by the Elland Road faithful. From those who played in the Champions League semi-final three years prior, just Smith, Hart and Matteo remained at the club. May the 8th, 2010. Leeds secured promotion from League One with a 2-1 win of Bristol Rovers. Leeds have remained in the second tier of English football ever since. Nobody from the 2001 match with Valencia remained at the club. Where did it all go wrong? Some might argue former chairman Peter Risdale. Leeds-born Risdale became chairman of the club in 1997 and under his premiership they reached successive European finals in 2000 against Galatasaray and 2001 against Valencia. By Risdale's departure in 2003, Leeds had sold over £50 million worth of players but remained £100 million in debt. Leeds United had spent over £100 million on players in Risdale's tenure. They gambled on would-be gate receipts generated by Champions League qualification and took out a huge £60 million loan. David O'Leary, the manager, who had bled a young group of players and almost dethroned legendary treble winners Manchester United, was sacked, as was Terra Venables. In a world where the top three teams qualify for the Champions League, Leeds fell from the heights of the semi-finals of the Champions League to fourth and fifth place in the league. Interests on loans rose as gate receipts dwindled. Rio Ferdinand, Robbie Keane, Lee Bowyer, Jonathan Woodgate, Robbie Fowler, Harry Kuehl, Olivia Ducart, Nigel Martin, Paul Robinson, Alan Smith, James Milner, Mark Viduka, Ian Hart, Nick Barnby, Dominic Matteo, Danny Mills and Michael Bridges were all sold prior to Leeds United's first season out of the Premier League in 2004-05. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Leeds United weren't forced to sell up. Simply put, Peter Risdale didn't take out monstrous loans and gamble away the club's finances. Leeds United were riding the crest of the Champions League semi-final wave. They finished fourth and were dumped into the UEFA Cup. The £20 million that would otherwise have been splurged on Seth Johnson and Robbie Fowler remained unspent. Instead, Stephen McPhail didn't go out on loan and James Milner was promoted from within. With just one loss away at Sunderland, Leeds trailed Newcastle at the top of the Premier League's on goal scored with both sides on 34 points. Arsenal and Liverpool were a point behind, whilst Chelsea and Manchester United were four points behind. The season was going to the bitter end. Oh, the glory days of the Premier League. The fixture list had thrown up a horrid January for Leeds, but in the space of four weeks they went undefeated against the other members of the top five, being held at Stamford Bridge and at home to Liverpool whilst thrashing Newcastle at St James's Park to go top, heading into the business end of the season. A run of 18 games unbeaten meant Leeds led Arsenal by 5 points at the top of the table. They would fall to successive defeats at Filbert Street and at home to Manchester United though. A third successive European semi-final away into Milan in the UEFA Cup had become a strain on their fixture list. Just three days later after a momentous night in the San Siro, thrashing Inter Milan 3-0, Leeds fell to defeat at home to Sunderland. Anything but a win at Villa Park the week after would surrender the title to Arsenal. Leeds confirmed a first European final since the European Cup final of 1975, but would be held by Aston Villa. Another loss, this time at Derby County, surrendered another league position. Leeds fell to fourth place again. Luckily, the Champions League positions had grown to four for the English clubs in the 2001-2002 season. Leeds were back in the Champions League. They wouldn't qualify as UEFA Cup holders, however, having lost 3-2 to Borussia Dortmund in Rotterdam in the final. In the summer of 2002, Leeds maintained their squad, keeping hold of Rio Ferdinand amid a bidding war between Juventus and Manchester United. David O'Leary stayed on with the promise of cash for transfers. Nick Barnby, Matty Upps and Titus Bramble and Nicholas and Elka all came in for a combined £40 million. By New Year's Day 2003, Leeds raced into another five-point lead at the top of the Premier League. They had beaten Juventus home and away in the Champions League. Out of the big teams, they had only played Newcastle United away from home, of which they crumbled to defeat. Further losses at Anfield, Old Trafford and Stamford Bridge removed any formalities of Leeds walking away with the Premier League title. On the continent, however, Leeds had slain Juventus once more in the quarterfinals and had a date with Real Madrid at the Bernabeu in the final four. But first, Leeds had plans in London. Arsenal led Leeds by two points going into the penultimate game of the league season, a title showdown at Highbury. Goals from Harry Kuehl and Nicholas and Elko were cancelled out by Thierry Henry and Dennis Bergkamp. The clock ticked down. Two minutes left, enter super sub, Mark Viduka. The Aussie struck, Leeds won 3-2. They leapfrogged Arsenal. 
a slender 2-1 loss in the Bernabeu in a fourth successive European semi-final was curbed by being crowned the Premier League champions with a win over Aston Villa at Elland Road. A 1-0 scoreline was needed in the second leg at home to Real, and that's exactly what they achieved. The final was at Al Trafford. Carlo Ancelotti's AC Milan stood in their way. A drab final was taken to extra time in Manchester. Nicholas Nelka had an off night. Two minutes left on the clock, enter super sub Mark Viduka. Two minutes later, Leeds were European champions, a 1-0 win over AC Milan. Leeds would strengthen again. They'd win the Premier League again in 2004 and a fifth and sixth successive European semi-finals were achieved in the following years. Peter Isdale would sell the club in the summer of 2005, with David O'Leary being courted by the likes of Bayern Munich and Barcelona. Due to club successes, Jonathan Woodgate, Rio Fernand, Alan Smith and Lee Boyer were all included in an England side beaten in the 2006 FIFA World Cup final by Italy. May the 8th, 2019. Leeds completed their 21st successive top six finish in the Premier League since Peter Risdale came to the club in 1997. Let's march on together towards the winners and losers. Peter Risdale, winner. The Leeds-born businessman didn't gamble away Leeds United's future and remained patient with Leeds' successes, far inflated in this alternate universe. Manchester United, losers. Their 2002-03 Premier League triumph was put on the back burner thanks in part to a lack of Rio Ferdinand signing and Leeds' lack of player exodus. AC Milan and Carlo Ancelotti, losers. With AC Milan beaten in the 2003 Champions League final, Ancelotti would have to wait until 2007 for his first European triumph as a manager, 17 years after his second European Cup win for Milan as a player under Rigo Sacchi. Jose Mourinho, loser. With Leeds' league winning 2005, Mourinho was sacked at the end of his first season in England with Chelsea. He ran back to Portugal with his tail between his legs and was successful in the UEFA Cup and the league with Benfica. And Lee Boyer, a winner. He did play in a World Cup final, I guess. This video was made as part of the What If Football launch day. Each week, starting from Monday morning, a new scenario will be published right here on YouTube.